Hello students, in this new series 10 minutes quick revision, we will be revising the first chapter of the 12th biology NCRT book reproduction in organisms. So let's get started. As you all know that any organism take birth, grows, matures and in turn produces new offspring through the reproduction and finally dies. So there is a cycle of birth, growth and death and this time period between the birth and death it is known as lifespan which doesn't correlate with the size of the organism. So let's see how reproduction is important in the life cycle of an, any organism. We see a vast number of plant and animal species existed for several thousands of years and how because they have adapted to their habitat and evolved their own mechanism to multiply and produce offspring according to their internal physiology and this multiplication and producing offsprings is known as reproduction. Reproduction is of two types based on whether there is participation of one parent organism or two. When single parent is involved it is known as asexual reproduction when two parents are involved and there is the formation and fusion of male and female gametes it is known as sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction number one single parent produces offspring number two clones are formed because offsprings produce they are morphologically and genetically similar to their parents that's why the term clone is used for the offsprings number three this type of reproduction is found in single celled organism like protists and monodonians so here you can see a table with the name of the organism and their mode of asexual reproduction or the asexual reproductive structures. Amoeba and Paramecium they reproduce through the binary fusion, yeast through the budding, Chlamydomonas through the motile juice spores, Panicillium through conidia, Hydra through budding and spawns through gamules. Till now we have talked about the asexual reproduction in animals. Now we will see how asexual reproduction take place in plants. The word vegetative propagation is used instead of asexual reproduction in plants. So here you can see a table where there are names of plants and the vegetative propagules. Vegetative propagules these are the structures which help in vegetative propagation and they are capable of giving rise to new offspring. So here in the table you can see banana and ginger they have rhizome as their vegetative propagule, agave as bulbil, water hyacinth as offsets, bryophyllum, leaf buds, sugarcane nodes, potato eyes and dahlia tuberous roots. Here in the slide you can see that vegetative propagation have some advantages and some disadvantages. So vegetative propagation can be used by the gardeners and farmers for the commercial propagation of the plants like banana, ginger, sugarcane, potato and bryophyllum leaf. You may have heard the scourge of water bodies or terror of Bengal that was caused by water hyacinth. Water hyacinth it is an invasive weed grows in standing water. It was introduced in India due to the beautiful flowers and leaf shape. It can propagate at phenomenal rate and can spread in short period of time and it drains oxygen from the water that will lead into the death of the fishes and it's very difficult to get rid of them this was all about the asexual reproduction in animals and plants now we will be discussing the sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is an elaborate complex and slow process as compared to the asexual reproduction and it involves formation and fusion of haploid gametes and because of the fusion of haploid gametes they bring two different sets of chromosomes and results in offspring that are not identical to their parents so no clones are formed okay when an organism takes birth and it dies in between these two events it goes through different phases and these different phases are number one juvenile or vegetative phase so all organism have to reach a certain stage of growth and maturity before they can reproduce sexually so this period of growth is known as juvenile phase in animals and vegetative phase in plants second is uh, the reproductive phase this phase can be seen easily in higher plants when they come to flower and in animals some uh, morphological and physiological changes are seen like in humans we can say in males uh, the roughness of the voice and uh, the growth of the hairs and females development of the breasts these are some of the morphological and physiological changes next comes the senescence stage 
the end of reproductive phase can be considered as one of the parameters of senescence phase some concomitant changes so natural changes occur in the body like slowing of the metabolism during this last phase of life this was about the three phases in the lifespan of an organism now we will see some of the terminologies which are used for plants and animals so first we will be talking about the plants first terminology that is monocarpic if plants they flower only once they are known as monocarpic and if they flower and give fruits more than once they are known as polycarpic such as bamboo species flower only once in their lifetime generally after 50 to 100 years and second is strobilanthus kunthiana nilkuranji that flower once in 12 years flowered during 2018 last time and its mass flowering transformed glass tracks of hilly areas in Kerala, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu into the blue stretches and attracted a large number of tourists. Next terminology is annual. When a an plant is annual, it means it completes its life cycle in one season. And when it is known as biennial, it means it will complete its life cycle in two years. But both annual and biennial plants, they will flower once. Perennial plants, they complete life cycles and lives more than two years and mostly they are polycarpic. Some plants flower throughout the year and others can show seasonal flowering. Now let's talk about the terminologies used for animals. Number one is seasonal breeder and second is continuous breeders. So seasonal breeders are the organisms which breed during the certain time period of the year to produce offsprings and examples are like birds, frogs and lizards. But birds can be commercially exploited when kept in captivity like the poultry farms. Second is continuous breeders. These are the animals they are reproductively active throughout their reproductive phase and hence called continuous breeders. Example of continuous breeders are mammals. Placental female mammals they show cyclic changes during their reproductive phase. It means in the activities of the ovaries and accessory ducts as well as hormones during the reproductive phase. These cyclic changes they are known as menstrual cycle in primates like monkeys, apes and humans and it is known as estrus cycle in known primates like cow, sheep, rats, deer, dogs and tigers. After the terminologies, now we will be discussing the events in sexual reproduction. So as we know that fertilization or fusion of gametes, it is the most vital event of sexual reproduction. So before the fusion of gametes, we must know that how these gametes are formed, that is gametogenesis, and how they are brought together for fusion. So gamete transfer. So these two processes, gametogenesis and gamete transfer, they come under the pre-fertilization events and after the fertilization the formation of zygote and the development of embryo from the zygote they come under the post fertilization events so first we will be talking about the pre fertilization events it means gametogenesis and gamete transfer gametogenesis it means formation of gametes if both the type of gametes they are morphologically similar they are known as homo or isogamete example is cladophora alga if both the gametes they are different they are distinct then they are known as heterogametes in heterogametes male gamete is known as anthrojoid or sperm and female gamete is known as egg or ovum example is ficus alga and human beings they have different or distinct gametes so this was about the gametogenesis formation of gametes now gamete transfer Gametes must be physically brought together for fusion. Mostly male gametes are motile. Exceptions are few fungi and algae in which both the types of gametes are motile. But in uh, several simple plants like algae, bryophytes and teridophytes, water is the medium through which gametes are transferred. A large number of male gametes however fail to reach the female gamete and for the compensation of this loss of male gametes the number of male gametes produces several thousand times and in seed plants pollen grains they carries the male gamete and ovules carries the egg cell or female gamete male gametes are transferred through pollination it means from the anthers pollens are transferred to the stigma 
and pollen grains germinate on the stigma and the pollen tubes carrying the male gametes they it will reach to the ovule and will discharge the male gametes near the egg cell now both the type of gametes they have brought together for fusion now fusion will take place and this process is known as syngamy and a diploid zygote is formed sometimes the female gamete undergoes development to form new organism without fertilization and this is known as parthenogenesis examples such as rotifers honey bees and even some lizards and birds turkey now question is that where does syngamy or fertilization or fusion of gametes take place so if it is outside the body of the organism like in the algae fishes and amphibians it is known as external fertilization if this syngamy or fusion takes place inside the body of organism like in reptiles birds mammals bryophytes stratophytes angiosperms and gymnosperms it is known as internal fertilization a major disadvantage of external fertilization is that the offspring are extremely vulnerable to predators threatening their survival up to adulthood that's why organisms exhibiting external fertilization they show great synchrony between the sexes and release a large number of gametes into the surrounding medium that is water and a large number of offspring are produced before going to the post fertilization events that is the zygote and development of zygote we must know the sexuality in plants like uh, unisexual plants if both the reproductive structures they are present on different plants it is known as unisexual condition in bisexual condition both the reproductive structures male and female reproductive structures they must be present in the same plant in several fungi and plants term such as homothallic and monoecious they are used to denote the bisexual condition and heterothallic and dioecious these are the terms used to describe unisexual conditions in monoecious plants where both the reproductive structures are in the same plant but there may be two types of flowers bisexual flower and unisexual flower in bisexual flower pistils and stamens are present in the same flower but in unisexual flowers unisexual flower may be pistillate or staminate pistillate it means they will have pistils only staminate means they will have stamens only so we talked about the sexuality in plants unisexual it means heterothallic and dioecious bisexual condition it means homothallic and monoecious in the monoecious type of plants they may have unisexual flowers or bisexual flowers similar to the plants in animals also they may be unisexual animals like cockroaches and humans and bisexual like earthworm sponge and tapeworm and leech bisexual animals are known as hermaphrodite animals there is an another interesting topic that is cell division during gamete formation so gametes are haploid though the parent plant body from which they arise may be either haploid or diploid so if a haploid parent produces gametes it will be through the mitosis and if a diploid parent is there then the meiocytes gamete mother cells they will undergo meiosis to produce the haploid gametes example where diploid parent forms the gametes through the meiosis is pteridophytes gymnosperms angiosperms and animals an example where haploid parent produces haploid gametes through the mitosis is monera fungi algae and bryophytes okay so till now we have seen that in the events of sexual reproduction pre fertilization events are there in which gametogenesis and gamete transfer is there and after the gamete transfer fusion of gametes that is fertilization take place and after the fertilization post fertilization events are there in post fertilization events first is the formation of the zygote so after the formation of the zygote in organisms belonging to fungi and algae zygote generally develops a thick wall that is resistant to desiccation and damage and it undergoes a period of rest before the germination zygote is a vital link that ensures continuity of the species between organisms of one generation and the next this was about the zygote formation now embryogenesis embryogenesis refers to the process of development of embryo from the zygote during embryogenesis zygote undergoes cell division 
and cell differentiation cell division it means only increasing in the number of cells in the developing embryo and cell differentiation it helps groups of cells to undergo certain modifications to form specialized tissue and organs to form an organism so on the basis of whether the development of zygote takes place outside the body of the female parent or inside there are two types of animals oviparous animals and viviparous animals oviparous animals they lay fertilized or unfertilized eggs examples are reptiles and birds and they form calcareous shells around eggs second is viviparous animals they give birth to young ones and chances of survival of young ones is greater in viviparous animals because the development of the zygote it takes place inside the body of the female in flowering plants the zygote develops into the embryo and the ovules develops into the seed the ovary develops into the fruit which develops a thick wall called pericarp that is protective in function and after dispersal seeds germinate under favorable conditions to produce new plants so this was about the reproduction in organism to get the notification regarding the videos of the next chapters revision do subscribe this channel and a link is given below to download the last 10 years questions of this chapter and this study material and keep learning thank you